Well, welcome to another edition of What's Going On Out There. I'm your host, Tyler Tatiata. The wait is finally over. You guys have been memorizing 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, all the way to verse 9. And we are so proud of how many of you guys have been memorizing the Bible. Mr. Taylor's been receiving so many videos. He gave them all to me. And we're going to draw winners today. Four of you guys are going to go home with a prize. We are going to draw your names here in just a minute. And we are so proud of all of you guys who've been working very, very hard to memorize the Bible. Now, we can only have four winners but just so you know, whether you win or you don't win, we are going to load your Bible Buck bank full of Bible Bucks. So even if you don't win, you're going to get so many Bible Bucks into your bank. In fact, every time you sent Mr. Taylor a video of you memorizing the Bible, he put Bible Bucks in your bank. So don't worry, even if you don't win, Bible Bucks are coming your way. Now we have a lot of people who entered videos and here's those people right here. Check it out. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He's constantly gone again to a living hope, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that's imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, and for you, by God's power, and being God through faith. For a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. In this, you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. No lack the test of genuineness, more precious than going that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to his own praise, glory, and, and honor. honor. Revelation of Jesus Christ. You do not see him. Love him. Though you're not to you need it. And rejoice with joy. That is inexpressible. And filled with glory. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. First Peter 1, 3 to 9. Oh, that was amazing! Great job, everybody. I'm super duper proud of you. Now, I've written your names down on all of these pieces of paper. I'm going to put your names into my jacket pocket and we are going to draw our first winner together here now the first prize that we are giving away is the k-force battle bow who wants to go home with the k-force battle bow you can build your own weapon to shoot down targets it's gonna be awesome somebody's going home with this right now here we go are you ready to see who wins i put my hand in my pocket and i'm gonna stir it around and the winner is Callan Gibbons! Good job, Callan Gibbons! You won the K Force Battle Bow! I am so proud of you! Way to go, buddy! This is yours! You get to take this home! You get to build your bow and knock down whatever you want to knock down! This is for you, buddy! Great job! Ready to go for you! Now we are going to draw a few more names in just a minute. you got to stay tuned with the rest of the episode. But first, stand up on your feet and let's kick it over to Miss Shannon for some worship. You have no birthday. You have always been. You alone have no beginning and no middle and no end You're always with me, you are everywhere In New Jersey or in Egypt, even outer space, you're there Everything you are and do is unbelievable but true You're the God of wow, amazing, how could this be? You're the God of wow, you're more than could ever ever dream The more I learn about you Exclamation points are bound to the God of WOW! You're never needy How could you be? 
You made everything on earth and in the sky and in the sea. You're never lonely, the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet you're reaching out to me, inviting me to come to you. Inconceivable but true. You're the God of wow, amazing. How could this be? You're the God of whoa. You're more than I could ever, ever dream. The more I learn about you, exclamation points are bound to the God of wow. Shout enough when I want to praise your name But don't know how I just say, wow, amazing How could this be? And I say, wow, you're more than I could ever, ever dream The God of wow, amazing How could this be? You're the God of wow You're more than I could ever, ever dream Exclamation points are bound to the God of Wow! Designer of the dinosaurs Mapper of the ocean floor Of all the wilds below above The best of all Miss Shannon, that was a lot of fun. Appreciate you uh, doing that for the kids. I know how much you love them. Now, uh, what we're going to do is do another winner. Who wants to know who's going to be our next winner? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it over to Jack Van Peltebird, who's over there in the jungle. Jack, can you see us? Let's see who's going to win next, Jack. Hello, Tyler. I want to thank you again for having me on the show. I will be proceeding to pick a name from my assistant, Martha, who will be helping me today. And uh, whoever's name I draw will be receiving this, um, um, this, uh, this fluffy looking... Moving on. Well, here we go. I'm going to pull the name out. You're welcome in advance, whoever this is. I feel like I have so much power. All right, here we go. The name is... Huh. Congratulations to Genevieve on winning this. This is spectacular. Oh, this, um, what is this? A squish mallow. That's exotic. Well, congratulations and back to you. Oh, go Genevieve. What, what? Go Genevieve. Woo! Great job, Genevieve. Fantastic memorizing those bio verses. Congratulations on winning your new favorite toy. You got fun snuggling up with that precious animal you got there. Now we are gonna kick it over to our next segment, which is the Super Splash Bros taking the city by storm. Who likes the Super Splash Bros? We're gonna kick it over to them because they've got our next video coming up. Here we go, take it away guys. This one's called, I Can't Believe My Eyes! called you back 
This one's called My Pleasure. Thank you! Oh! My Pleasure! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Oh! My Pleasure! This one's called Are You Kidding Me? Yeah! Let's do it! <laughs> looking for a third splash bro count me in i'm ready to rock you guys just waiting for the phone call for our next giveaway i brought in my personal hero to draw the name he's the reason why i went into the television business the one the only professor bailey thanks tyler i'm professor bailey and today we're gonna rock Supercar Helicopter! This is amazing! It's aerodynamic! It flies! It's scientifically incredible! Now, I am so excited because we're gonna draw one of your names who memorized your verses right now! Here we go! Who can it be? Who can it be? It's Kate! Thompson! Congratulations, man! You get to win the Mario helicopter! Oh, I am so excited for you. Congratulations, man! Hey, we're gonna bring it back to you, Tyler! Oh! Congratulations, Cade! You know what? I happen to know your dad pretty well. I mean, him and I go way back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convince him to buy you one of those helicopters so that we can give it away to another person. Hey, Professor Bailey, can you draw another name? Kate gets a helicopter. Who else is going to win a helicopter? Wow, that is a great idea. Not only do we get one Mario, uh, Mario helicopter away, we're going to get a second Mario helicopter. So if your name didn't get chosen, you might be here. Right here, right now, let's see who's gonna get it! It's Jesus. Zachary Murray! Wow, Zach, you just won your very own Mario helicopter. You're going to defy physics. No, you're going to experience physics as you learn about flight, and your flight is gonna take off to a roaring soar. You're gonna have so much fun. This is so exciting, congratulations. This has been an exciting time here. Wow, thank you. Back to you, Tyler. Thank you, Professor Bailey, and congratulations to Zach Attack Murray. I believe you and your sister hold the record for how many Bible verses have been memorized during this time that we've been making videos. So well-deserved, my friend. Have fun with your new Mario helicopter. We still have one more prize to give away. But before we do, we're going to go over to Mr. Taylor for the Bible lesson. So get your Bibles out and let's go over to him and get into the Bible. That's right. It is Bible time. Let's get our Bibles out and let's open them up to see what God has to say. We are in the book of First Peter. Did you guys know that? We're still in First Peter. Here we are in chapter 2 now. Do you guys know what page First Peter is on? Some of you might have memorized this by now. It's on page 1015. If you got a Bible that matches mine, go ahead and open up to 1015. If you have the Read and Grow Picture Bible, can you turn to page 257? 
257. Well, we're going to start with this Bible right here, and you can turn to chapter 2, if your page doesn't match mine, of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. We have been learning from Peter. He's been writing to the people who are dispersed. They can't be together. They had to flee for their lives. Do you guys remember that? And now he's writing them this letter and he's telling them who they are in Christ. He's telling them how to live as Christians. And here he's going to really help us think through something so important. So I need you guys to look at 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 11. I'm going to read 11 and 12 right now together. It says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So there's a few things there that we need to look at. And what's really important, something that we need to hone in on today, is this phrase when he says, abstain from the passions of the flesh. The passions of the flesh. Let's stop for a minute and let's think about what he's saying. Because that's a key idea here when he's talking to the people. Abstain from the passions of the flesh. Well, to abstain means like not to do something. Like I'm going to choose not to partake in something specific. So to abstain, to not do that. That's what the word abstain is talking about. Hey, don't do this. Okay, now what is the this that he's talking about? What is he telling them not to do? He's telling them to abstain from the passions of the flesh. So to abstain, let's not do that. Passion is something that you love, something that you desire, something that you crave. Have you ever been out on a hot day and the days have been getting warmer? Have you guys been feeling this? Some of you are now out of school. Some of you have a week, maybe two to go. And the weather is starting to feel like summer. Is the weather starting to feel like summer to you? Ooh, it's getting exciting around here. It's starting to get warm. Nice summer weather. Have you ever been out on a summer day and you just desire, you crave, you want an In-N-Out milkshake? Anybody know? Anybody feel me right now? An in Oh, that sounds good even right now as I think about it. Something cold, something refreshing. You see, that might be like something I crave, something I love. Well, it's saying here, the passions of your flesh. Now, flesh here is talking about who I am. All right. So who I am and, and specifically we're thinking about who I am before I know Jesus. So let's put this together. I need to not partake. I need to abstain from the things that I crave, the things that I love that are sinful. Did you catch that? The passions of my flesh. My flesh is sinful. Who I am is sinful. Can we all agree on that? That when we're growing up that we sin and the passions of who I am, the thing that I actually crave and want to do is not what is right, but is what is wrong. Like I do wrong things. I sin against God. That's why the gospel is so necessary. It is important. It is the first thing. It is what we all need. We need the gospel because our flesh, who we are, is innately sinful. It's wrong. Now, when we think about the gospel, there's a certain passage that we turn to every time we think about the gospel. Do you know what it is? Can you remember what the passage is? We've now looked at it. If you've been watching these videos week after week, you probably know or you're starting to learn what it is. It's 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Let's throw it up on the screen. This is what it says. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you, as of first importance, what I also received, 
that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Jesus, and what Paul is saying here is that Jesus, he came to die for us. He rose from the dead and he is the Christ. He is God. And because he is God, he rose from the dead. He saved us from our sins. Now we can have a new life because the passions of my flesh are sinful. So Jesus offers a new life. Remember we talked about being born again? That's what we all need because the passions of the flesh, the things I crave and desire, well, those things are sinful and I need to turn away from those. I need to repent, to turn away from my sin, to abstain and to turn to God. That's repentance, to turn from sin to God. And when I put my trust, not in what I can do, can we be good enough to go to heaven? No way. Can we do enough good things to earn our way to heaven? Absolutely not. Can we be a good enough person or try to keep the rules? No, not at all. The only way that we can be saved is if we put our faith in what Jesus did. It's only by what he did. If I believe in that, that's the only thing that can save me. And I hold on to it. I cling to it. Have you ever been, maybe in summertime, you've been swimming in the pool? Some of you guys have been out there swimming and maybe you have a pool in your backyard you're swimming in. Well, if you have ever like had that feeling where you're about to drown, like you can't keep your head above water, what do you want to grab onto? Maybe your parents or like a floaty. And maybe you're on the floaty and you slip off and you're like desperately trying to get, well, guess what? In the same way that you would grab onto your mom and dad or you would grab onto that floaty. You see, you're putting your trust in that. You're saying, I can't save myself. I'm going to sink. I got to grab onto the floaty. I got to grab on to mom and dad. That's the only thing that can save me. That's what faith is. It's me saying, I can't swim by myself. I got to grab on to Jesus. He's the only one. I got to hold on. Jesus is the only one who can save us, and it's through the gospel. So once someone is saved and they become a new creation, well now, 1 Peter, what he talks about here is that now we're in this war, this spiritual war, and he says you need to put on, you need to wage war against the flesh. You can't be going into your old passions. you got to abstain from those things. The, what's going on in my life, the old self, like after I become a Christian, well, I'm still living on earth. I'm still in this sinful person, this sinful body. So I got to wage war. I got to abstain. I got to stop doing those things because they wage war against my flesh. All right, I can't. Being in Christ Knowing Jesus and living for God, well, that's totally the opposite of sin. Remember, I repent. I turn away from sin to God. So those two things do not go together. God and sin, my new life in Jesus and my old life of sin, those two things don't go together. So we need to fight that. We need to put off the old. That's what he's getting at here. It's like being in a battle. I got to wage war against my old self. That's what he's talking about. But then he goes on here to say that we need to keep our conduct among the Gentiles, people who don't know God, so that when they speak of us as evildoers, check this out, they may see your good deeds and give glory to God on the day of visitation. What the Christian's goal in life, if I put my faith in Christ, you know what my goal is? my purpose for living, you know what I want to spend every day doing? Glorifying God, giving God glory, praising Him, living for Him, doing things even in my own life, saying no to sin, well, that brings God glory. The whole purpose now of my life, because I'm a Christian, because I've been, I'm trusting in Jesus, I've turned away from sin, well, the whole purpose of my life now is to bring glory to God. And if you have your picture Bible open, I want you to open up and look at uh, page 257. Let's look at page number 12 here because Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he didn't just stay on earth. He ascended into the clouds. Do you see that picture of Jesus ascending into the clouds? 
right before Jesus went up into the heavens. You know what he said? All authority has been given to me. That's what Jesus said to him, to Jesus. All authority on heaven and on earth and under the earth. Everything, all God, Jesus Christ, he is the king. And everything now is to glorify him. Everything that a Christian does is supposed to bring glory to God. That's how we're supposed to live. In fact, if you turn all the way to the last page of your picture Bible, page 319, look at picture number 11. There's Jesus on the throne, the king. I mean, Jesus, he has all authority. He is the king. He is radiating in brilliant light. He's amazing. Just to look at his face, it would be like looking at the sun. Have you ever seen the sun on a hot day? I don't recommend it. Don't look into the sun, all right? You'll get your, you'll get your eyes all messed up. Jesus Christ, his face is like the sun shining because he's glorious. And so he deserves all the glory, all the praise. My entire life should now be lived to glorify him. And Peter says that as Christians are doing that, as they're living to glorify him, well, even people who don't know God will see the way that Christians are living and they'll praise God. It's like they're giving him glory because of what other Christians are doing. They see their good conduct. The way that they're living isn't sinful anymore. They actually do what is right. And people that don't even know God will look at that and be like, wow, that right there is right. We shouldn't be doing things that people will end up looking at us and say, wow, that person's doing something wrong. No, if you're a Christian, my whole life now is to glorify God. And just by the way that I conduct myself, other people, other people that don't even know God will look at the way that I live and they'll give glory to God. So, that's what Peter wants to teach us today, and I really want you guys to think about that. Maybe even talk this over with mom and dad about the gospel. What is the gospel? What does it mean to repent? What does it mean to have faith? And how does a Christian now live once they're in Christ? Let me pray for us real quick, and then we'll move on to our next thing, all right? Let me pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much that you are a good God who has saved many from their sins, that you offer forgiveness through your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose from the dead. We thank you for the gospel. And we pray that many kids would understand that they would put their trust in you, that you would open their eyes to seeing the truth, and that they'd believe, and that you would be glorified through their life and through their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys, for being here. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Mr. Taylor, for the Bible lesson, and thank you guys for joining us. We still have one more prize to give away, so to draw the name, we're going to go over to the Super Splash Bros. They're going to draw the winners for our last prize. Let's go! Yeah! What's up, kids? Woo! Are you ready to find out who wins the ultimate lifeboard? I got some names right here. I'm ready to pick it out. This one's called Congratulations! Congratulations to all of our winners. I will be contacting your parents. I'll let you know how we will get you those prizes this week. Have a great time playing with them. And it was so much fun today on the show. I'm glad you guys were with me. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you next time here on What's Going On Out There. Have a great weekend, guys.